Do most video games actually release broken? Everyone likes to point fingers at game developers nowadays for the broken, buggy launches of every single game that comes out. There's a narrative being pushed that the gaming industry is dying due to countless games being released unfinished and unplayable. While there are definitely launch issues that need to be addressed, people are blowing this way out of proportion. The differences between the number of games coming out running like butter and the number of games that look like trash is massive. A lot of you aren't ready for this conversation. More often than not, games that are being delivered today are incredibly well polished maintain a consistent frame rate, and are not over-reliant on battle passes and microtransactions. That's not to say that launch issues don't exist. Games like Fallout 76, Cyberpunk 2077, and No Man's Sky have left a poor taste in the people's mouths regarding big releases with terrible performance on day one, unfulfilled promises, and overall wasting players' time. While a good amount of the games with these rough launches have been patched and run smoothly now, and a lot of their issues being addressed, we should be receiving functioning games on launch. There is still no excuse for companies to release a product that is unplayable. But for every awful launch we see, it is usually sandwiched between a wave of incredible titles. 2017 cursed us with Star Wars Battlefront 2, but blessed us with the likes of Cuphead, Nier Automata, Resident Evil 7, Hollow Knight, Uncharted 4, Little Nightmares, Neo, Breath of the Wild, and I could keep going. Fallout 76 was not it in 2018, but do you know what was? God of War, Insomniac Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, The Walking Dead Final Season, A Way Out, Celeste, Sea of Thieves, Detroit Become Human, Shadow of the Colossus Remake, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Each of these games had a phenomenal launch with minimal bugs and absolutely zero microtransactions. Look at any one year of gaming as a whole, we see far more consistent releases of fantastic games than the buggy mess some people claim to see. More often than not, games that launch rough have red flags you can see from a mile away. Things like poor looking trailers, a lack of info, and embargoes that lift a day before release should have sirens going off in your head. If a game makes promises like seemingly limitless gameplay opportunities, thousands of planets to visit, and endless exploration that is dependent on RNG, you might want to think twice before picking it up. It is much more painful to see a great game from a trusted company release so broken, but it is rare to see that happen. It's not the standard some people claim. These claims have led to a wave of people boycotting pre-orders altogether, saying that we shouldn't reward companies for good marketing, but for good products. While that sounds good on the surface, there are a few things to consider when making claims like that. First of all, you need to look at the studio behind the game. Some studios, such as Insomniac, Naughty Dog, From Software, and Rockstar, have built a solid foundation of trust with its consumers. They have a solid track record of releases, where terrible launches are the exception rather than the rule. You've played the games they have to offer and have seen a consistent level in quality. This can be especially true for titles that are sequels to the same series, so long as the team behind them roughly remains the same. Most examples people give for games with awful launches have a few similarities. Having faith in the people working on our game should be a big part of whether or not to pre-order a game, and there are plenty of companies who have established themselves as worthy of having that faith in. Secondly, regardless of whether you pre-order or not, when you buy a game you are paying for it before experiencing the product. You have to, on some level, trust the marketing and development teams to sell you on a product you will actually enjoy. You don't go to the movies, watch it, and then not pay for the ticket because you didn't like the movie. You pay first, and then go, because the movie seems like it'd be something you'd enjoy. Sometimes you just have to roll those dice and risk seeing something that might not turn out great. That's where it's up to you, as the consumer, to do a bit of your own research. Look into who's making the game and their track record. Check out reviews from trustworthy sources, and look to see when review embargoes lift. Heck, you can pre-order and then do your homework if you want. A pre-order can always be cancelled. Battlefield 2042 is a perfect example of that. The trailers looked good, and the massive multiplayer aspect was super enticing, so I had my pre-order locked in. And then they released the beta, and everyone saw how rough the game was at that point. Pre-orders were cancelled left and right, including my own. And when the game was released, still busted, DICE made none of that money. Now, the game is free on Game Pass and was even dropped on PlayStation Plus. Pre-orders are definitely still worthwhile, especially if you want to get a collector's edition that has a lot of cool collectibles and merchandise, so long as the game being released is complete and functioning. So where does this narrative come from, that all games release broken? It is true, not every game releases running buttery smooth. 
may be seeing performance issues a little more often because of how gaming is processed, specifically new-gen gaming. Games are being developed for new-gen hardware, and when companies try to cater to old-gen hardware, it doesn't always translate well. And that's where we get issues like the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. PC ports are some of the worst offenders when it comes to poor performance. Arkham Knight in 2015 was a horrendous mess, so much so that they pulled the game from digital stores for months. Last of Us Part 1 is such a disappointment as well, taking one of the best games of this century and turning it into a nearly unplayable mistake. These issues don't stem from how the games themselves were made. Arkham Knight and The Last of Us Part 1 are both incredible games when they're played on their native consoles. Blame can be put squarely on the shoulders of the ones in charge of porting the games to PC. There is a plethora of reasons PC ports tend to have so many problems, but in the end, it isn't the gaming as a whole that needs an overhaul like some suggest. Just a better way to port pre-existing games onto other consoles. Another major complaint I see is not about the performance of the games, themselves, but their over-reliance on in-game purchases and the battle pass. Not a game's hardware that's broken, but its progression and reward system. This argument has been blown way out of proportion as well. Yes, the number of games that have battle pass systems and in-game purchases has increased in recent years, but there is a stark difference between a free-to-play game with a rotating store of cosmetics and a game that I already paid $60 for that requires purchases to progress. For example, in Gran Turismo 7, it isn't necessary to purchase faster vehicles to do better in the game. They give you the opportunity to unlock them without spending any real money. However, the amount of earned in-game currency required to unlock the vehicles requires countless hours of playtime and effort that makes the reward you were working towards seem less valuable. They essentially rig the system to incentivize paying real dollars rather than time playing. While this is a problem, the situation is few and far between. In fact, some game devs are actually listening to complaints made by the fans when implementing this system. Shadow of War had in-game purchases on launch, but was very quickly removed due to backlash from consumers. The new Suicide Squad was announced to have a battle pass system. The outcry was immediate and intense. While it hasn't been confirmed due to the community outrage, it seems highly likely that the system will be reworked before the game's official release. Overall, while there will always be things to be concerned about when new games launch, the future of gaming is not in jeopardy. Year after year, we are seeing innovative gameplay, engaging and enriching stories, and improvements to how our games look and run. If anyone tells you that all new games being released are broken, they clearly are buying the wrong games.